So one of the last big topics that we're going to cover uh, is the way that we can use assembly language to replicate some of the high-level language structures that we're used to in our introductory programming classes. So if you've taken CS 110, uh, then you've learned how to use arrays in C++, and this structure should be fairly uh, familiar to you, right? You have the name of the array, and then in parentheses, brackets, I guess, uh, you have the index, that is which element in the array you're interested in, uh, and then you can assign it a value or you can read its value. You can go through an array and find the biggest number, or the smallest number. You can use an array to search uh, for a particular value. You can sort an array into uh, um, incrementing order using any of a number of different search algorithms that you've learned. And this is really the first big data structure that you work on until you learn some of the higher level data structures like linked lists and trees and a bunch of other stuff. All of those things can be written in assembly language, but we tend not to teach them in assembly language because they do get pretty complicated and there's a lot of things that can go wrong. But when we, when I show you how arrays work, you'll see that the basic concept of having a pointer to a piece of data and then having some way of getting to the next piece of data, which is the fundamental aspect of linked lists, um, that also is how, assemb or how assembly language does arrays, sort of in a way. Um, arrays are grouped together, you'll see as we go. Uh, but I want to just sort of let you know that the idea of these higher level data structures uh, is sort of inherited in some ways from the way that assembly languages access memory using um, addresses, which are essentially pointers. Uh, and then you can see sort of how all of the higher level structures go. We'll talk about a few different kinds of arrays and we'll give a couple examples here. So arrays as a common structure in high level language, uh, a collection of related data accessed by an index. You give an index to the array and then the machine finds that value and gives it back to you. So what does that look like in assembly language? Well, in assembly language, especially MIPS, we only have one way to access memory and that's using load word and store word instructions. We have different sizes, load, byte, store, byte, stuff like that, but it's only load and store. Uh, and the only uh, addressing mode for memory is this base plus offset addressing. Uh, which MIPS implements. When you learn ARM or x86 or other assembly languages later on, you'll see that there are lots of other different ways you can access memory, but in MIPS it's just base plus offset. And that offset is, a, is an immediate value, right? You can't change that offset while you're running. And so if you want to actually say, I want to access the value that is some, um, some non-determined amount past the base, you can't do that at runtime. You have to do that at assemble time. And so there's some constraints that we're going to have to work with. Uh, but the basic idea is that we're going to access memory using a load word instruction, bring that memory into a, a register, and that the address is going to be based on some address that's already in a register. This is going to be our base pointer, and then some offset from that. So here this is a2 plus 4. If we wanted to say, you know, write a loop that looked at the first five elements after some address, we couldn't do that with base plus offset addressing because the base value is hard coded in the assembly language. Instead, we'll have to use some other technique, which we'll talk through. Um, so the way that MIPS, or there's a couple different approaches then based on this idea of accessing elements uh, of an array. We can either access them using uh, indexing, which is sort of what we're used to in uh, in higher level language. And we can also use pointers, which we can imagine a way that you can do that in high level language, have a pointer to the first element in an array and then offset by some standard value to get to subsequent elements in the array. Uh, these are both have sort of advantages and disadvantages and they are you know, uh, a little bit of a challenge to write the code for each of these, but we'll walk through each of them and you can see uh, where we're going. These are visual representation of these two different approaches, the uh, index versus a pointer. So the index process uh, says we're going to keep an array, or we're going to keep the register that contains uh, the base address or the first address in the array, and we're going to keep another register that contains the index of the element we're interested in. So if I want the fifth element in the array, I would say the base is this address, whatever it happens to be. I'd add five elements. Uh, and then I'd be pointing at the fifth element in the array. Now, it's uh, important to note that because words are four bytes long, the fifth element is actually going to be the 20th element past the array. And the first element is the element that's right at the base. And then this is why um, arrays start at zero, actually, right? And this is why you have A uh, at zero 
is the address of the array itself and also the address of the first element in the array. Right? The first element of the array is where the base is that pointer and the offset from that base is zero. That's the first element in the array. And this is why array start at zero. Everything comes back to assembly language. Um, so then the other way to do that is to, instead of having two registers, one for the base and one for the index, uh, we have one register, which is the element that we're interested in, and we just modify that locally based on what we want to do. So if you want to walk through all the elements in the array, we start with the array pointing at, uh, or we start with the pointer pointing at the first element in the array, and then we add four, and we add four, and we add four, and we add four to the pointer itself, as opposed to, to the index. And that works as well. There are some positive elements and some negative elements to this. Uh, but this is probably the easier one to understand, especially if all you want to do is walk through the elements of the array in incrementing order. This will allow us to do sort of random access, uh, accessing any element in the array at any point. And so if you want to do higher level um, sorts that involve jumping around in different areas of the array, this is going to be the way you want to do it. This one will work fine. Uh, if you just want to start at the beginning and go through to the end, which if you're searching or looking for a maximal value or doing a basic insertion sort or selection sort, this is fine. Uh, so when you are in the lab for this course, you'll uh, do you'll walk through the pointer access format of array access. And that just means that we're going to have a, a register that contains the address of the element we're interested in. And when we're done with it, we're just going to add four to that and go to the next element in the array. It's almost like accessing the elements in a string, which we've already sort of done, right? We look at the first element in the string, and then the next element, and then the next element. In this case, we're only looking at it one byte at a time, because each character is one byte. If you're looking at it in a word sense, meaning one word at a time, then you're going to do four bytes at a time, so we add four to our pointer each time we go. Uh, the problem with the pointer access is if you're not careful, you might lose where you're at, right? There's the You're not necessarily, unless you're careful about it, maintaining access, maintaining some pointer to the first element in the array. And so you might lose where you're at. Uh, it is a little bit more difficult to access information randomly, although it can be done. You need to know relative to your current location where the next location of interest is. So if you want to jump back three elements and then jump forward seven elements, you can do that, but it's harder to keep track of. But again, if all you're doing is walking through one one element at a time, it's nice and straightforward. Um, so there's no easy way to access a random element, and access to the first element can be lost if you're not careful, uh, but it's a good way to learn, and so that's what we do in the lab. Indexed addressing then, as we said already, uh, is we maintain two registers. Uh, one is gonna always point to the beginning of the array, and one is gonna have an offset from that array that gives us the element we're interested in. It's sort of hijacking the process. Instead of saying an, uh, an immediate offset, which is how base plus offset addressing works on a load instruction, we have a register offset, which we then move. But we need to do this in a few instructions rather than having a single instruction that does this. That might be another thing that would be interesting to ask you to add to um, the assembly language is, um, multi is register plus register addressing as opposed to register plus immediate value addressing. And what would that look like? What would the instruction look like? How would you have to modify the data path to make that work? That would be a nice, interesting, difficult, but interesting question. Maybe we'll use that as a, uh, as a review question before the exam. We'll see. Uh, okay, so you're going to maintain two registers. Uh, the one has the base address, one has the offset. And then the uh, in this case, in this example that we're going to do, uh, register T0 will, will point to the start of the array, and we're not going to change T0. Uh, and then register T1 is going to contain the index that's going to be T1 plus 4 times, or sorry, T0 plus 4 times T1 will get you to the um, location that you're interested in uh, by adding these two together, uh, T0 plus T1. Now, you could maintain 4 times T1 in the index, and that would be fine as well. Uh, the address of the array itself then is preserved, and so we can see how this stuff works. Uh, the other way to do this is to do sort of both together, a mixed access where you maintain a pointer to the front, and you also maintain a pointer to the element you're interested in, and maybe you also maintain a pointer to the last element in the array, and this is actually what modern languages do when they do a mutable array, uh, an array that can change size, because when you allocate memory, um, you allocate this much memory, and then if your operating system is really conservative, it'll then allocate the next chunk of memory, and that's why in C++ you can't change the size of an array after you've allocated it. 
But in modern languages, immutable array is a perfectly good data structure. And so when you uh, maintain a pointer to the beginning, pointer to the end, and you move through it, um, then you can actually modify the size of the array uh, based on the size that you need. And there are some advantages and disadvantages to that. But of course, all of that is taken care of by the compiler and the operating system, leaving you to not worry that it's consuming extra resources. Uh, you shouldn't use a mutable array unless you need it. Um, because it can consume resources and it uh, makes your code larger and more complicated and slower, but computers are fast these days, so maybe it doesn't really matter. So we're going to do an example of a selection sort. Now, if you don't know what a selection sort is, I expect I suggest you go back uh, to look at your uh, CS110 notes or wherever you learn selection sort. Basically, the concept is you go, you, you sort an array by looking through the whole array and finding the smallest element and then putting that in the first element. Or in fact, in this case, we're doing it the other way. We're looking through and finding the largest element and we're putting that at the end. It's like you have a deck of cards and you flip through it and you find the, the, uh, the king of spades and then you put that at the end. And you flip through it and you find the queen of spades and put that at the end. It's not the most efficient way. In fact, it's a, one of the least efficient ways, but it's very easy to understand. It's very easy to write code for. So in the next video, we'll look at writing some code for this example.